Alright, so um, welcome students, welcome back to my class and again, I am John for Salget and I will be your instructor for today. So before we begin, I wanted to ask, um, how are you doing, Sir Benke? Uh, I'm quite good, ma'am. Uh, kind of stressed deeply because of workloads at school. I see, but that's a uh, no, part of life of being a student. <laughs> we can do anything about that. So, are you ready for today? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready for a yes. new challenge? Yes, ma'am. Right. Super ready. Without any further ado, let's start. So, um, as an introduction, I will um, give you a voiceover about a dialogue and um, I want you to take note of the following. For the first question, we have um, how many miles does Luna need to walk to reach her school? For the second question, what happened when she is walking? And for the third question, why is she running to go to school after the rain? I repeat, take note of the following. Question 1. How many miles does Luna need to walk to reach her school? For the second question, what happened when she is walking? And for the third question, why is she running to go to school after the rain? Do you um, already taken down notes of these questions, Mr. Benke? Uh, yes, ma'am. Alright, so can you please um, repeat of what I have just said? Uh, you, Mom, you want me to take note of the following questions. Uh, the first question is, how many miles does Luna need to walk to reach her school? While the second question, the second question is, what happened when she is walking? And the last question is, why is she running to go to school after the rain? All right. So, I want you to answer these questions after the dialogue. All right. I will give you five minutes to think about the answers. Am I understood, Mr. Bank? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. All right. So here is um is the dialogue. Luna is living far away from her school. It's Monday, and Luna needs to go to attend her class, and it's two miles away from her house to reach the school. While she is walking. She notices that it's sunny when suddenly it rains. So she stops and shed to a near store. When the rain stops, she runs so fast because it's 7.30 a.m. already and Luna doesn't want to be late in her class at 8 a.m. In the end, Luna still attended her class in time. Did you hear it clearly, Mr. Benke? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, so let me repeat it one more time, all right? Then after that, I will give you five minutes to answer the questions over here. Luna is living far away from her school. It's Monday, and Luna needs to go to attend her class, and it's two miles away from her house to reach the school. While she is walking, she notices that it's sunny when suddenly it rains. So, she stops and shed to a near store. When the rain stops, she runs so fast because it's 7.30 a.m. already and Luna doesn't want to be late in her class at 8 a.m. In the end, Luna still attended her class in time. Alright, so it's already 8.35 and I will give you 5 minutes. I will call you at exactly um, 8.40 p.m. Mr. Benke, you may begin.
All right. Um, time is up, Mr. Benke. Are you ready for your answers? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Can you please read the first question and kindly answer it afterwards? Ah, uh, the first question is, how many miles does Luna need to walk to reach her school? And my answer is, ah, uh, it is two miles, ma'am. Yes, correct. How about the second question and your answer, please? And uh, the second question is, what happened when she is walking? And my answer is, it is sunny when suddenly it rains, ma'am. All right, also correct. And for the last question? The last question is, why is she running to go to school after the rain? And my answer is, uh, because it is 7.30 a.m. and Luna doesn't want to be late. That's correct. Very good, Ms. Maramanga. That means that you're listening carefully to the dialogue that I give to you. Now, um, I want you to listen one more time to the dialogue and also take note of the following. Take note of the time, of the distance, of the weather, and the dates. Again, I want you to take note about the time, the distance, the weather and dates that can be included in the dialogue or um those these i mean these um time distance weather dates these options that can be found in the dialogue am i clear mr benke uh, yes ma'am all right so again what are my questions mr benke uh, mom you want me to take note of the following elements uh, which is time mm -hmm. distance weather and dates ma'am all right this time i'll play the dialogue one time only and after that i will give you three minutes to answer these questions am i understood yes ma'am all right let's begin from her school. It's Monday, and Luna needs to go to attend her class, and it's two miles away from her house to reach the school. While she is walking, she notices that it's sunny, when suddenly it rains. So, she stops and shed to a near store. When the rain stops, she runs so fast because it's 7.30 a.m. already, and Luna doesn't want to be late in her class at 8 a.m. In the end, Luna still attended her class in time. Alright, so your three minutes starts now. I will call you at exactly 8.46. Thank you.
hello again so time is up for three minutes is up already mr banquet may i now hear your answers ah uh, yes ma'am mr banquet ah uh, yes ma'am so how about the um the questions that i have earlier what's your answers into that okay ma'am uh, in the beginning uh you want me to take note of the following which is uh, following elements which is time distance weather and dates and these elements are present or can be found in the dialogue like for example it is monday and luna needs to go or to attend uh, her school uh, in this sentence uh, the phrase it is monday pertains to date ma'am and and the second phrase that i have noticed is it is two miles away which pertains to distance and uh, the sentence says it is sunny when suddenly it rains uh, which tells us about weather and it is 7 30 a.m which pertains to time ma'am yes correct very good mr Rubenka. i am happy that he answered all of those questions i also have my answer so let's see if we have the same so you are correct it's monday which talks about the day it is two miles which talk about the distance it's sunny it rains that talks about the weather of course and it's 7 30 which talk about the time so as you uh, observe mr Rabanke, we always use it the word it before the specific um time or weather or distance that we use and um we actually call that it as a dumb subject why we call it it as a dummy subject because the word it only serves as the grammatical subject of the sentence but um it doesn't have a lexical meaning on it it's just that it is just there for the grammar for it to um to have a subject which can maybe talk about as i have said about the time date distance and etc am i understood mr Abenke? uh yes ma'am so i have another question what did i did i just say right i just say that it as a dummy subject and it as a dummy subject talks about what again mr Abenke? uh uh it can talk about time weather date and distance ma'am all right very good so is it clear for you do you have any questions or clarifications before i move forward uh so far none ma'am all right good so for this one again i want you to take note of the following the first question are there clauses in the dialogue and the second question what have you observed in the beginning of the dialogue? And for the third question, what does the dialogue express? In what way is it used? Again, are there clauses in the dialogue? What have you observed in the beginning of the dialogue? And for the third question, what does the dialogue express? In what way is it used? Now, um, I will give you another dialogue for this one so again mr Rebenke, before i play the dialogue once again what are the questions that i have just said uh, the questions are first are there clauses in the dialogue second is what have you observed in the beginning of the dialogue well the last question is what does the dialogue express in what way is it used? All right, very good. I will now um, play the dialogue, Mr. Rebenke, so please listen carefully.
let me just fix it for a little while and I apologize for the error all right oh yeah I'm sorry it's just that I'm having some difficulty now in logging in and finding the voice over that I have used my apologies once again but I hope that you learn from the previous topic, which is it as a dumb subject. And now we're moving on for um, a new topic or lesson. Here is the dialogue. It is hard to make mistakes in a new language because you are not familiar with the use of words that they use. It is also a shame that so many people give up on learning once they experience that it is hard to learn. It is perhaps because the perseverance and patience that most of us have are not enough to push us to learn harder. It is always for us to learn and experience new things life would offer and I I am hoping that we will find strength in ourselves to continue to learn no matter how hard it is. Alright, so let me repeat it once again, Mr. Rebenke, for a more um, clearer version. Alright. It is hard to make mistakes in a new language because you are not familiar with the use of words that they use. It is also a shame that so many people give up on learning once they experience that it is hard to learn. It is perhaps because the perseverance and patience that most of us have are not enough to push us to learn harder. It is always for us to learn and experience new things life would offer and I, I am hoping that we will find strength in ourselves to continue to learn no matter how hard it is. Alright, did you um, or do you understand the dialogue Mr. Rebenke? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Do you want me to repeat it again or is it clear? Is it clear? Uh, it is clear already, ma'am. Alright, I will give you again five minutes to answer the questions that I gave to you earlier. Alright, you may begin.
Uh, yes, ma'am, I have noticed that there are clauses in the dialogue. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm the... sorry. I just lost my connection, Mr. Rebenke. Can you please repeat it again? Um, are there clauses in the dialogue? Uh, yes, ma'am, I have noticed that there are clauses in the dialogue. All right, so what are the clauses that you have noticed? Uh, it is the infinitive clause to and clause that, ma'am. All right. I'm sorry that I have to repeat myself. I just lost my connection. So the infinitive clause to and the clause that are the clauses that you have observed. Very good. Nice observation. Now for the second question. What have you observed in the beginning of the dialogue or in each um, sentence? that um that the, the dialogue has rather uh ma'am i have observed that at the beginning of the dialogue there is always uh the word it at the beginning of each sentences ma'am all right um so just as you have said that is in the beginning of the sentence and the word or the word it and am i right Alright, now for the um, last note that I told you to. What does the dialogue express? In what way it is used? Well, ma'am, I believe that the dialogue is... I'm sorry, of Mr. Belief. Benke. That Can you most please of us. It? You just lost your... Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, it is audible na, ma'am? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Since that it expresses a general uh, truth of belief that most of us really give up and it is really embarrassing to give up without even trying, ma'am. I'm, I just heard the word belief, Mr. Benke. I think that you are losing your connection right now. Hello? Are you still uh, there? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat it one last time? Because I can't hear it clearly. I'm so sorry. Okay, ma'am. Well, uh, here's my answer, ma'am. Well, I believe that the dialogue is true in the sense that it expresses a general truth of belief that most, that most of us really give up and it is really embarrassing to give up without even trying. All right, that is um, actually correct because in the dialogue that I gave earlier, there really is, um, is an actual general truth or belief that is expressed in the dialogue and that is um many people um give up so easily especially on learning a new language so in this sentence you said you have said earlier in the beginning i'm sorry for the noise that um the word it is always in the beginning it means that it is in the introduction, right, Mr. Rebenke? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, so that is what we actually call introductory from the word introduction, from the word that it is put in the first at the beginning of the sentence, introductory. And this time, um, introductory it has or serves rather as a subject to the sentence but this time it has a lexical meaning on it it means that the word it this time not just serves not just serves rather as a grammatical subject but serves as a subject with a meaning on it with a lexical meaning on it because we cannot put infinitive clause to and clause that in the beginning of the sentence. It's just wrong. It's not acceptable in English language. That is why we put it at the beginning of the subject. Am I understood, Mr. Rebenke? 
Ah, yes, ma'am. Very clear. And um, additionally, the word infinitive clause 2 and the infinitive or yeah, infinitive clause 2 and the clause that um, is actually used in introductory because it serves, um, how can I say this? It serves as a clause to connect the other sentence to the beginning, to the introduction of the sentence, to make it whole, to make the meaning of it more clear. Am I understood, Mr. Rebenke? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Alright, so before I move forward, um, what is introductory it again, Mr. Rebenke? Uh, it, uh, it as introductory, it, uh, uh, you said that, ma'am, uh, it can be, uh, the, the subject of the sentence because it has a lexical meaning and, uh, it is essential in introductory it that it has infinitive plus two and infinitive plus that to make the sentence clear and understandable. Alright, very well, good news, Rebenka. I I am glad that you understand the lesson. So, to the next slide, I want you to create three sentences that have the introductory it that um, includes the infinitive clause to and the clause that. You may you may use the two clauses in different sentences. Alright. I will give you um, three minutes. Is that enough for you, Sir Benke? Yes, ma'am, more than enough. All right. I will give you three minutes, and then after that, I will call you to hear your examples or answers. Thank you. Hello again, Mr. Rebenke. I hope that you are done with your sentences. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Yes, okay, ma'am. Let's begin. So, what is your first sentence? Uh, my first sentence is, uh, it is so important to be relaxed about making mistakes. And in this sentence, I use infinitive clause 2, which can be found 
uh, between the word important and be. Again, the sentence is, it is so important to be relaxed about making mistakes. Very good. That's um, actually correct. We can sound the introductory it, of course, in the beginning of the sentence. All right. How about your second sentence? Um, my second sentence, ma'am, is, it is unlikely that you will be comfortable speaking aloud at first. And in this sentence, of course, it as an introductory, and I use a uh, clause that which can be found uh, between the word unlikely and you. Again, the sentence is, it is unlikely that you will be comfortable speaking aloud at first. All right, very good. That I'm um, actually right too. You're actually good at making sentences. How about the last one? Uh, my last sentence, ma'am, is it is difficult to remember facts if you don't write them down. And in this sentence, again, I use it as an introductory and I use uh, infinitive plus two, which can be found between the word difficult and remember. Again, the sentence is it is, diffi it is difficult to remember facts if you don't write them down, ma'am. Is that a belief, Mr. Rebanke? We have that belief now that if we don't write them down, we won't remember them. But I believe that that's true. <laughs> we can actually remember all the things that um, may actually happen if we don't write them down. All right, so you did a great job today, of course, as always. But before I end the discussion, I wanted to ask what is the difference between it as a dumb subject and introductory, Mr. Rebenke. Uh, it as a dumb subject uh, cannot be served uh, as the subject of the sentence. Uh, it is rather served only as the grammatical of the sentence. And it as a dummy subject always pertains to distance, weather, time, and date. Like, for example, uh, I'm going to walk to school. It is two miles that way. In the, in the sentence, uh, uh, I use distance. Uh, as a dummy subject, uh, rather it as a dummy subject, and and it as introductory, ma'am, uh, serve as uh, can be served as the subject of the sentence because it has lexical meaning, and it is essential in introductory it that it has infinitive plus two and plus that to make the sentence clear and understandable ma'am all right very good i'm so happy i am glad i am really happy for today um i just realized that you improve and so am i in the meeting that we have and that's all that's all you learn everything already i am happy so thank you for today thank you for every meeting Thank you for this semester that I am with you. I'll see you again, Sir Benke. Alright, goodbye. Have a great day.